Thanks for joining us here with Learn Something New Every Day with CQI. My name is Tim Hines. I am the director for Sukafina Papua New Guinea, as well as a Q instructor in the Q processing and Q Arabica programs. I'm excited to uh, share with you a little bit today about mass conversions. This is a topic that we discuss in the Q processing level two course. Now, I know you're sitting at home and probably the last thing that you want to do is have a math lesson, but it's a really important part of basic mill management, uh, metric calculations. Um, I, uh, Joel Schuler, who is a great friend of mine, he, he was the first one I ever heard share this quote, but he, he shared a Mike Tyson quote um, that said, uh, everybody has a plan until you get punched in the face. And oftentimes we see mills get metaphorically punched in the face by not planning and not uh, calculating what their capacity is. Um, and so let's take a look a little bit at some of the uh, specifics and let's, uh, let's dive in. So as we begin to look at this, the first question we need to ask is what are these and, and, and why are they important? So if you think about a situation where a farmer, um, they typically produce washed coffee and they begin experimenting with some natural processed coffee and they do a small volume for the first year and they realize, wow, you know, customers liked it. Let's, let's increase that from the one metric ton we did last year. Let's do 10 metric tons this year. And so they began the process of harvesting and selecting ripe fruits and began drying. And very quickly they realized that they don't have enough drying space. They completely underestimated their capacity to produce. Or rather, let's look at another example. You're wanting to set up a wet mill in an area and you need to better understand based off the amount of fruit available in the region, what size of wet mill should you build? Uh, how many fermentation tanks? How many pulpers do you need? All of these are questions that we talk about and discuss how you can develop a framework to understand that. Let's say you have a, a yield question. You have a customer who wants one container. They want 19,200 kilos of your beautifully uh, processed washed coffee. And you need to calculate how many fresh coffee fruits do we need to buy from harvesters or how many do we need to harvest in order to achieve that volume. Um, you could also have a situation where you're a co-op manager and the uh, co-op says every month we want to get a report. What is our inventory? And we don't really want to know that just in fresh cherry and parchment and you know partially dry parchment and some wet parchment. We want to know in, in, in green coffee how much do we have on a monthly basis? And so what you might do is take a look at how much fresh cherry you have, how much parchment you have drying, how much uh, dry parchment is already bagged up in the warehouse, and how much green coffee do you have in the warehouse? And you would need to determine what your ratios to convert that to green coffee so you can add that all up and provide that report to the co-op. As we begin to look at this, the first thing I want to note is that during the course we use certain conversions and these are based off of a Colombian study that was done and it's fairly accurate um, numbers for that region. But we know that because every region is different and so you as a processor need to develop your own key metrics for your farm, for your area and for your or for your mill. Um, and that would include starting with a sample of fresh coffee fruit. You'd want to weigh that and then you'd want to pulp that and then weigh what is the pulped parchment weight. Try to say that 10 times fast. <laughs> then you, maybe you're doing a washed coffee. So then you ferment that coffee. You put it through the fermentation step and then you wash it clean. As you, after you wash it and drain it, so you're getting ready to put it out on your patios or your raised beds, what does it weigh? And you want to keep the same volume together so you can follow the ratios through the entire process. And then you dry it. Once it's at a 10 to 12% moisture content, you can dry it or you can weigh it rather and you can get a figure. 
and then you can hold that. You can remove that endocarp, that parchment, remove that, and then you can get a weight. You could even sort the defects out, and then you could get another weight. All of those would be key metrics. Now, I realize that you can't do this for every single batch of coffee that's coming through your mill, and that's okay. What we want is to be able to, over time, develop a um, standard or the best approximation of a standard that we can get for our region so that the metrics that we're using and the ratios that we're using are more applicable to our situation. Here's how we use them. You can see the chart here that begins at fresh cherry, dry cherry, pulped coffee, drained parchment, dry parchment, and green coffee. And on the right, you can see the perspective weights. And everything is in respect to green coffee. So for example, if we wanna know how many kilos of fresh cherry are in one kilo of green coffee, it's 5.56. Now again, this is for this study that was done in a region of Colombia. So your numbers might be a little bit different. In fact, I find uh, at many farms I've worked at that it could be closer to six, six and a half, or maybe even seven. It just depends. So everything ties back to green coffee. Uh, dry cherry, we know that that's a natural process coffee that's been dried, and so forth and so on. What I'd like to do is walk us through a few example problems. So I'm going to jump over to the whiteboard, and let's talk through a couple problems together. This is a capacity problem. You're about to begin your harvest season, and you want to set your targets for daily coffee cherry delivered to your mill. Currently, you have two horizontal drum pulpers, five stainless steel fermentation tanks, 20 raised beds for drying, and one concrete patio for drying. We see that each pulper has a capacity of 250 kilograms of cherries per hour, and you can run it 15 hours per day. You apply a 48-hour dry fermentation protocol to your coffee, and you can ferment 2,000 kilograms of freshly pulped coffee in each tank. Once the coffees are washed, you can put 15,000 kilograms of drained parchment on your drying patio, and each raised bed can hold 500 kilograms of drained parchment. The total drying time for both is 10 days. And the question is, how many kilograms of cherries can you receive to the mill each day? Now, when I'm doing these problems, I always like to kind of, you know, uh, circle the important information. So we know that we have two pulpers. It's not really important at the horizontal drum, but we have two pulpers. We have five tanks, 20 raised beds, and one concrete patio. We know that our pulpers can pulp 250 kilograms per hour. Okay, so that's going to be an important thing to remember. And we know that we apply a 48-hour dry fermentation protocol to our coffee, and we can ferment 200 kilograms of fresh pulped coffee in each tank, freshly pulped coffee in each of those tanks. So we have two tanks, each that will, pulp two, or that will hold 2,000 kilograms of pulped coffee. Apologies for the bad handwriting. And it requires two days for that. And then once the coffees are washed, we can put 15,000 kilograms of drained parchment. So that's going to still be wet because we just drained it. We're going to work on getting that dried on your drying patio. And each raised bed can hold 500 kilograms of drained parchment. Okay, now what? Are, how, how many days does it take to dry? Well, the total drying time for both is 10 days. Now, we know that that might be a little unrealistic because we'd expect the, you know, uh, coffee on the patio maybe to dry a little faster. But for the purposes of our example, we'll be okay. So what do we need to do? What do how do we work this problem out? So the first thing we want to do with a capacity problem is we want to find where is the bottleneck? If you think about a bottle, the way that a bottle is, is, is drawn, and, and I'm also a terrible artist, so I apologize, but we know that there's a choke point. There's a point where you can't fit any more through. So we want to understand where is our choke point? Where is our bottleneck? And that 
becomes the limiting factor for our capacity problem. So we know that, uh, let's talk about our pulpers first. So we know that we have two pulpers, okay? So each of those pulpers can do 250 kilograms of, of fresh cherry an hour, and we run the mill for 15 hours per day. So that's going to be 250 times two machines for 15 hours per day. And when we calculate that out, that's going to give us 7,500 kilograms of fresh cherry per day. Now, when you're doing these kinds of problems, it's so important that you keep, you make sure and write your units because it's easy to forget um, what the unit is, all right? Now, we know that we have um, some tanks, some fermentation tanks. And I see here that I already made an error because I said two tanks, but actually it's five tanks. Five tanks. So that's a, I did that on purpose to remind you of how important it is to make sure that you are uh, using the correct data. So when we begin this problem, we're going to look at, uh, because we're wanting to convert this to, we're trying to understand how many fresh cherry. So we want to take that number and we want to convert it to fresh cherry. So we want to ask the question, 2,000 kilograms of pulped coffee, well, how many kilos of fresh cherry is that? Now, there's many different ways to do this. I use a uh, method that's called cross multiply and divide. You can use different methods. But we know from our ratios on the previous slide that there is 3.39 kilograms of pulped coffee in one kilograms of green bean. And there is 5.56 kilograms of fresh cherry. Okay, so that's our ratio. We basically have set up a ratio here. And that's the standard that we're using. But now in our example, we have 2,000 kilograms of pulped coffee. And we want to know how much fresh cherry. So what we do is we're going to multiply across. So you can see here, we cross multiply. So that's going to be 3.39x equals 5.56 times 2,000. And that's going to give us 11,120. Once we get here, then we're going to divide each side by 3.39 because we want to solve for x. So 11,120 divided by 3.39 equals 3,200, and we'll call it 80, we'll round, kilograms of what? Fresh cherry. That's right, 3,280 kilograms of fresh cherry. Now, remember, we have five different tanks, okay? So we're putting 2,000 kilograms of pulped coffee in each tank. So what should we do to this number? That's right. We should multiply it times 5. 3,280 times 5 is going to give us 16,401 kilograms of fresh cherry. Now wait, we're not done because we said that the protocol we use is a 48-hour fermentation. Now, I realize you might give or take a few hours. I, I understand that. But what do we need to do in order to figure out per day? We need to divide it by 2. So 16,401 divided by 2. And I'm going to stick this over here. I'm running out of space on my whiteboard. Is 8,200. We'll call it 8,200 kilograms of fresh cherry. Okay. So that's for our fermentation tank. We have our pulper up here, and now we're going to look at the drying. Okay, so the first thing we see is we have 15,000 kilograms of drained parchment, and it takes 10 days to dry. So let's just go ahead and divide that by 10 so we can know what we have per day. And that's going to be 1,500 kilograms of drained 
parchment. Now, let's convert that to uh, fresh cherry. So what's our, what's our ratio we're going to use? Well, we have, we're going to put drained coffee on the top here and fresh cherry on the bottom. And we're going to use the uh, table. We're going to use the table from the previous slide. So we know that drained coffee is 2.31 and fresh cherry is 5.56. That's going to equal... 1,500 kilograms, which is, we just got the number from right up top, of drained parchment. Now, something I want to note here, when you set up these problems, this only works if this number here and this number here are the same unit. This only works if this number, if this number here and this number here are the same units, as well as this number here and this number here is the same units. And we put our standard, what we use our metrics for on this side, and we put our current scenario on this side. Okay, and then we're gonna cross multiply. Sorry, it's getting a little crowded here with all the arrows and circles. 2.31x equals 5.56 times 1500. And that's going to be 8,340. And then we're going to divide by 2.31. And that's going to give us 3,610 kilograms of fresh cherry. Now, that was just the drying patio. Now, let's look at the drying beds. The drying beds said... 500 kilograms of drained parchment per bed. And how many beds do we have? Well, let's look back at our problem. We have 20 raised beds for drying. So we have 20 beds, 500 kilograms of drained parch per bed for 10 days. Okay? Let's go ahead and convert the 500 kilograms to uh, fresh cherry. So just like we did up above, 2.31 over 5.56. Let's go ahead and put drained parch and fresh cherry equals 500 over x. 2.31x equals... 5.56 times 500 is 2,780. Divide that by 2.31. And that's going to be 1,203 kilograms. Now, we're not done yet because we also need to remember that that's 20 beds. So this is fresh cherry per bed. So let's multiply this times 20, and that's going to give us 24,060. And now we said it dries for 10 days, so we need to divide by 10, and that's going to give us 2,406 kilograms of fresh cherry. And we can add that to our drying patio 361 that's going to give us a grand total of 6016 kilograms of fresh cherry every day okay now what that's going to do we're going to look at that and we're going to look at this Compared to, we're going to look at this number compared to our pulper and compared to our fermentation tank. Which one is the bottleneck? And you can clearly see that drying is the bottleneck. And, and this is often the case in farms is that drying becomes the bottleneck. And so this problem, if, you, if this was your mill, 
you would probably settle on 6,000 kilos of fresh cherry each day. Delivered to your mill, you begin processing, you begin uh, fermenting and drying, and that allows you to maintain within your capacity. Now, I realize that sometimes you get punched in the face and things happen and you start getting more coffees than you can um, handle. And so you need to have contingency plans. What are you going to do? All of this information we talk about during the Q Processing Level 2 course. We also have other problems and other scenarios that we talk about and work through. Um, I invite you, if this is something that you're interested in, to uh, sign up for a course. Um, I know travel is restricted at the moment, but uh, soon when things open back up, I know there'll be many courses, and I'd encourage you to get involved and to check it out. If you have any questions, you can contact me through uh, the CQI website. Um, I'm always happy to answer any questions that you have or help in any way I can. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Hope you learned something, and I look forward to when our coffee paths uh, bring us together again. Have a good day.